All right, ladies and gents. Uh, Loey the Legends and Golden Swamp time here. Uh, Golden Swamp is not a map that we see that frequently in ranked. And every time we have new maps in ranked, I want to see what people are doing on them. In the red, we have Pixie... Almost... Almost... I wanted to say Pixie Dust. But we've got Pixie Dis playing as the Turks here. And then in the blue, we have the Jason Statham. The Jason Statham here playing as the Portuguese. Now, Golden Swamp is what I would consider to be an objective-based map. So you have all this gold in the middle. And I think these two players are going to look at this. And they're going to be licking their lips over like being aggressive here. Maybe we'll see players build towers in the middle. Maybe we'll see players build a castle there. But this gold is normally going to be the area that players are going to think about. But you don't necessarily have to rush it on this map. Because you do have lots of gold available at your base. So if there's one thing you take away from this, one thing you learn from this, if you ever play Golden Swamp, is sometimes sometimes people are too aggressive for the middle. Sometimes players are in too big of a rush to take this. You can still play a safe game back at home. So you've got uh, Water Buffaloes, and then you also have the two Rhinos. So Water Buffaloes having more food than sheep mean you also have lots of food. There's berries, uh, there should be some deer out there, and then you also have fish. We'll see if the players choose to dock and what the plan is. But this is 700 elo. Uh, at this rank, the players should probably have some hotkeys. Maybe they've got some build orders. Now, I don't want to offend anyone out there who's around 700 or 800 elo. But I'm going to describe what I consider to be your average 700 elo player. Okay? They know what they're doing up until about 18 bills. The first 18 vils, the first 20 pop, let's say, 700 elo players might be able to pass as a 1,000 or even a 1,200, maybe even a 1,600 elo player. But, you know, right when they click up to feudal age, that's where they're like, okay, I did that. Now what? <laughs> and the now what is kind of what makes it fun still. So, I, again, I would assume... And in general, they're going to have certain aspects down. But, you know, there's an interesting build here, actually, from from Jason. Uh, Jason is taking berries um, before chopping any wood. But maybe Jason understands this. If Portuguese do get some wood from taking the berries. So I uh, should be able to build a lumber camp eventually and still be okay. Wow. Okay, so we have a dock here from Red. Red's like, oh, my God. We've got water. We're going to add fish. We are so good. Oh, crap. I forgot a house. Panic. Panic. Whoops. New docking was important. Completely forgot about the house. Shoot. Okay, so now that now that we got the, the dock up, we need to wait for the wood for the first fishing ship. Rhino's on the way. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful. 10 out of 10. Let's go. Well played there from red. Someone said um, cup question mark, and I assume they were asking, like, is this, you know, the hidden cup map? So this map exists. I, I, actually, I haven't confirmed this. I, I should make this clear. Like, I don't want to be, like, you know, making statements that might be false. I am 97.1% certain that Golden Swamp exists because of the map cup, though. Because this map was introduced after cup. And uh, there are certain maps that the devs saw in tournaments and whatnot, and they didn't want to, like, steal the actual version and use the actual version. Also, Cup would, like, kind of make no sense. So they, they kind of... This is less complexities compared to Cup, right? Because the swampy area is uh, accessible the whole way through. But this, this came out in, like... I forget if it came out with DE or came out soon after DE, but Cup was introduced in, like, 2017, 2018? So as Red gets housed again and is doing a really good job otherwise, I think that this map was probably introduced because of Cup. But again, I've never... Maybe I should ask. It's not really that important, though. So Yeah, this is a, a good map. I really like it. I think it's like... It's a map where you can do so many different things, which is where Age of Empires 2 gets really good, in my opinion. Very relatable experience here from Red. Got housed twice and now says, let's not let that happen again. And is going to place some more houses now. Finally thinking ahead. All right. So I said first 20 villagers, right? Well, we're about to see what happens here with Blue. 
Blue actually hasn't taken any of the rhinos yet. So that's 800 food still waiting out there. And Blue also hasn't found the enemy yet. So he's looking around for the enemy. He's not going to find anything. Red uh, also hasn't found the enemy. This almost seems to be auto scout though. Interesting. Okay, so 700 elo. Still using the auto scout. Well, maybe Red wasn't using Auto Scout before, but Red was too distracted by the scout and got housed. <laughs> so Red's like, oh god, I'm doing too much here and just can now eliminate the Auto Scout from the equation mentally. And Auto Scout is scouting. All right. Interesting build order here from Jason. Has to pull this rhino in through the trees. Here he comes. Okay, no loom. Uh, oh god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, that's just round one, guys. That's a warm up, okay? <laughs> that's a warm up. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Jason's gonna try again. Oh god, no, not again. Not extra hits. Okay. And Jason says, nah, I'm not weakening it with the TC anymore. Screw it. Okay, and takes the Rhino. I want, I'm not sure if Jason tried that the first time or if it was a misclick. It's crazy, but, you know, these days the pros are always weakening it intentionally. I have seen people below 1,000 elo try and do it themselves. I think there, the fact the Rhino took so many hits from the initial villager screwed up the timing. But it's okay. We didn't see anything, right? Right, guys? We didn't see anything. Everyone say, what, Rhino? Um, I just always imagine these instances, though. It's like... Man, I get emails and messages. People are like, please, I want to be on Low Elo Legends. And maybe that's the first time that Blue has done that in months. And the only game we see from the Jason Statham is the game where that Rhino gets shot with the TC. Okay. So Blue moves through, finds the enemy. Good stuff. Uh, right now, I'm preferring Red's position, though. Red's fishing ships are bringing in tons of food. Red isn't going to be attacked or anything. Blue is definitely just kind of relaxed over here. Still no real indicators what their plan is going to be in Castle Age, but there's more villagers and there's fishing ships out here for Red. Feels like Red wants to go up to Castle Age. Red is missing the gold and some buildings for that. But could realistically see Red click up soon. Okay, so Blue... Has only seen this, so Blue does not know the opponent has been fishing here. But I think Blue is thinking that fishing could be smart. And we see Blue get the forging upgrade now, which is an interesting upgrade. It only applies to the scout right now, so it's 150 food for the starting scout. There is no loom for red, though, so if this scout with forging were to attack, it could kill a couple villagers. It's pretty rare, though, to see someone go for forging just for their starting scout. I think it might just be Blue wanting to get the text. Alright, so Blue queues up fishing ships. Is going to start to fish the middle as well, but Res collected. Everything's looking really good here for Red. Here's the starting scout. I feel like for this to be a close game, Blue scout needs to get some damage in here. And Blue scout is just sitting there, thinking about it. He's mustering up the courage. They told him, you are the only hope for our people. You are, you carry the hopes and dreams of generations. And he's not about it. He's like, I didn't ask for this. I, I just wanted a job. I didn't want to mean so much. I just wanted a paycheck. And so there he stands. I think Blue's obviously just going to be fishing here this whole time. But I mean, Red is even... Red, Red didn't even scout the enemy yet, actually. Somehow looped behind the enemy and never found the enemy. But Red has added a fire galley, which could kill the enemy's fish. Like, Red's position is so good, and the scout is attacking. And this is going to be multiple vills killed. Just because of no loom. And because of forging. Oh! Doink. Nice job there, Blue. So first two kills of the game, obviously. Also, we might see uh, Red freak out a little bit and Red make a bunch of spears, for example, thinking it's going to be a scout rush. 
But it's only the starting scout, and the starting scout gets to go home now. Or at least think about going home. A nice play. A farming eco is looking good for blue. Blue is probably going to panic when the opponent's in the castle age, though. Red does go for loom. <laughs> now, red is the Turks. You get the light cav upgrade for free. And blue doesn't have loom. Oh, God. Okay, so this could be so much worse. So if light cav run into this eco, blue could just be dead. But blue is still fishing. So that still hasn't been killed off. Red is in the next stage, and red does not know where to attack, right? Like, red is so focused on placing farms and doing some of the things that you need to do here. Red does not know the enemy's there, funnily enough. By the way, they both are missing all eco upgrades. We haven't seen the wood upgrade, the farm upgrade. Okay, now we got red doing it. Wheelbarrow, so... It's funny, we covered 400 elo earlier today, and those guys got those techs right away. Here, these guys are much better at fighting and, and scouting and making army and balancing it and the timings. It's like red hit Castle Age before 20 minutes. But uh, it's just interesting to see that those upgrades are missing. Now, Fire Galley is going to kill most of these fishing ships. But Blue is going to make a couple Fire Galleys here to defend these fish. Losing three fishing ships here. I mean, losing all your fish at this point, it's not that big a deal because there's not a lot of food left. But it's, it's more emotional damage than anything, right? I don't know why this fishing ship is headed over here. Um, but maybe it, just, maybe it just automatically did that. Blue will be in Castle Age in two minutes. This gives Red some timing and momentum to work with. Red will be happy with that. What's the scout's name, guys? Nobody named the scout. I'm so off my game after a week and a half off. What are we doing here? Um, let's see. A Portuguese scout. Mm. <laughs> you guys are saying Rob. <laughs> Fine. Okay, well, his name is Rob, and Rob is dead. Long live Rob. Fs to pay respects to Rob. Seems like Blue's gonna end up defending the fishing ships. And Red is just... Red is in full boom mode. The red is just dropping TCs and producing as many villagers as possible. This is a good thing to do with your castle age advantage. Does obviously give blue the potential, though, to attack and kill. Red does not know where the enemy is at all. Nor seem to really care. Did add another fire galley. Is going to add even more fire galleys, though, so good pressure there. And so they're going to see continuous fights on water. So stables coming up here from blue. So blue might be thinking about attacking with knights. Remember, blue knows where red is and that that eco is exposed because Bob just died. So a couple knights into the eco could be really devastating. Still no knights or anything from red. But you only have so much, so many things you can focus on in a game, right? That's got to be it. Blue is really in need of a new area for wood right now. I think a town center here, and I'm really liking Blue's position. Just a town center on wood. Combined with a couple knights on the field, could be really strong. Continue to see fights on water. They are in Castle Age now, so we could see the War Galley upgrade come in. Mm. Hello, Cape Man. Welcome. Will they upgrade their ships? I mean, it feels like it's worth it. You could also use the knights out here against the ships too. But then you're letting your opponent know you have knights on the water. I think you would prefer to surprise the opponent on land. Hyped Horse, after uh, a thank you for the year of subbing, says, After so many years, only 12-month anniversary, T90 Cry. Thank you for all the amazing Hidden Cup and all the other content. Salutes to you too. Thank you. Now, don't stress it. I get it. Can't sub all the time. Life is busy, or you can't necessarily justify a sub to some random mustached man on the internet. It's all good. No stress. Don't feel bad about it. I actually don't know the stats, but I would say that if you've subbed a year or more, you are in a very, very small percentage of people. It's just... 
Might not seem like a lot when I've been streaming for like 10 years, but it's very, very tough to have people who stick around a year or more. So thank you. Hmm. So, you know, eventually this eco is going to kick in, right? And then also red is going to be in military mode. So red's not there yet. Red's like still in boom mode, but eventually you, the resources are going to be sky high and red's going to start to make army. And that is where red would dominate. Red has upgraded the ships and is moving out here. So this could be good for red. <clears throat> but man, the knights are going to have full upgrades. This could be sick. Okay, blue doesn't even know that wood line is there. He's just going to make houses there. All right, Blue, if there was ever a sign that you need to do damage with the Knights, this would be it. Losing everything on water right now, what, this is your moment. Those three stables have been producing nonstop. Mm, oh, it's really unfortunate for Blue. Blue could have actually won this fight with the extra HP on the Portuguese ships. Oh, that's really unfortunate. But again, like fishing ships don't really add too much to your eco at this point. Blue is waiting. This is going to give red time. I think red might waltz to the middle soon and drop a castle, but red has no clue. Red doesn't know where the enemy is, guys. Like, red knows generally where the opponent is just because of the dock, but red has never seen anything in blue's base this entire game. I did send these light cav through. Okay, now the light cav are going to maybe run in. Blue, run with the knights! Blue only one minute and 53 seconds of TC idle time, by the way, is very impressive. Okay, worst case scenario here for blue is blue uses the knights defensively against two light cav and lets the opponent know. Oh, God. Blue doesn't even know. Blue does no loom, has no clue that two light cav are killing stuff underneath his TC. And there he goes. Will Red notice? Red right now is like, I'm feeling like a god. I'm feeling like a god. Oh my god, I'm so good at this game. I'm so good at this game. I'm so good at this game. No loom! Disaster for blue! And here go the knights. Does Red notice this? I've seen enough low elo games to know that the same thing could happen and Red might not know. Okay, Town Bell has been rung. A lot of people like to joke about the Town Bell and the inefficiencies of it, but sometimes you just gotta ring that bell. Blue noticed and will eventually kill the light calf. Lost 30 villagers. And now we have a panic castle from red. And blue sees it, but he clicks the castle foundation. You've got to get behind it here, red. Uh, blue, rather. And... Castle's going to go up. Wow, nice house walling there from red as well. Really sick. Impressive. I mean, at the end of the day, you did still ring the bell and you have a lot of idle time and there's still knights you have to kill. So if blue runs back in, red could still have some big problems here. But man, those light calf. Blue lost so much. And, and honestly, if Loom was in, I think it would have been a better situation. Murder Holes has come in now for red. What a great job from red to control the water. What a great job from red to go for the eco. Would like to see maybe some, some camels to deal with the knights. Because this is enough knights with enough upgrades to actually take out the TC. I don't know if Blue's going to do that, though. It feels like Blue is very hesitant still. And Red is like, oh, you give me a moment to rest, then I will go attack you again. Town Bell. Okay. Now, Blue doesn't know how bad this is. Well, never mind. Maybe Blue does. Blue's going to attack the TC. Hmm. Well, things get interesting now. That TC is going to go down. And the villagers will be exposed. And there are light cab in queue, but light cab will still die to knights. It, it, you know, in similar numbers. TC will go down. Villagers are exposed. Oh, God. But the light cab are back. Oh, God. <laughs> Blue. <laughs> oh, God. It's a slaughter. Really bad day to be a villager here. Blue's knights are underneath two TCs and castle now. Blue would have to pull back. It feels like red could stabilize. Blue defended this. Knights have still killed Vils. Like, killing 15 Vils and the starting TC of the opponent and forcing all this idle time is amazing. I actually think that this game is still winnable for Blue because Red is no food eco. Like, Red's four food eco is this. 
I think. And Lycav dies tonight. He spent all of his food on Lycav. Now he's trying to lure the opponent into the castle fire. It blue makes more knights. Oh, red resigns! Red resigns! Oh my god! <laughs> Loey the Legends just continues to deliver today. Red thinks, I can't kill this. I lost my starting TC. He's got too much army. Portuguese are too overpowered. And Red just says, man, I, I can't stop this. Blue wins the game. And the worst part about this, guys, is that Blue is never going to research freaking Loom. Because if you lose the game, you then think, hmm, okay, what went wrong? Okay, well, we lost a lot of villagers. Okay, well, we lost a lot of villagers. That's a problem. Oh, yeah, there's Loom. That's really helpful. But if you win the game, you're just like, oh, who needs it? No, nothing was wrong. It's fine. Uh, that's just war, you know, losing some villagers to some raids. We just killed more from him, and it's fine. Now, this is uh, definitely a throw. Even by Loey the Legend standards, my advice to you, Red, is just make knights or just make camels. I think like a lot of people are infatuated with Lycav because you get the upgrade for free and it only costs food. And, you know, that part is exciting. But at the end of the day, you're looking at an 80 HP unit against a 120 HP unit, 10 base attack for the knight and then seven base attack for the Lycav. The fight's not even close. So if that food, you have the gold there, Red, if you would have made knights of your own or some camels then maybe you're able to stabilize but great job from blue like red basically said i'm gonna go for eco and chip away at their eco and kill vils blue said i'm going for his entire base i'm going for tc's and it worked out sick someone says red literally has res for 50 pikes you think so okay let's see let's go to the tech tree i can guarantee you that you are literally wrong. Unless, of course, you know, he would use the market and maybe like buy food and sell wood. I think it's very easy to look at this position and say, oh, yeah, but he could just do this. But I think we all know when you're in the game, it's not so simple. Red also doesn't know that there's a 20 villager lead right now. Remember, Red didn't really see Blue's base for a while. So, yeah, interesting game. Well played from Blue. I feel like I've learned so much about 700 ELO in that game. The different timings, the different attacks, and then the uh, the ability to somehow come back from that was just crazy. Well played.